In this tutorial, we will be discussing units and scientific notation. A unit is a standard quantity used to specify measurement. Each measurement absolutely must have a unit. So for instance, if you tell me the number five, I need to know more specifics. I need to know, is it five inches or is it five meters? I need to know if it's five people or five pounds. All four of those units are extremely different, and so you need to be very specific when you're recording your data, and that's why you need the units. Also, so that way we can make comparisons. There's three different systems of measurement. There's the English, the metric, and the SI units. So let's do a direct comparison of those three. The English units are used primarily in the United States, and they're probably the ones that you're most familiar with, such as inches, feet, and Fahrenheit for temperature. The metric system, however, is used throughout the rest of the world. And instead of Fahrenheit, they use Celsius. Instead of inches and feet, they use meters, and for volume, liters, and so on. And finally, we have the SI units, which are probably what you're going to be referring to most in chemistry. These are units, this is a system of units made specifically for scientists, and they're based on the metric units. However, there are some differences. For instance, instead of Celsius, we have kelvins. Instead of grams, you'll have kilograms because that's actually more useful for people in the physics realm for using larger items. But we still have meters for length. So here's a list of the SI base units. As I said, length is in meters, mass is in kilograms, Chances are you're not as familiar with those, so you need to remember that. Temperature in kelvins, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit and how they compare to Celsius and Fahrenheit. Seconds is time. The amount of a substance is a mole, which you're going to be using this a lot in chemistry. And then electric current is ampere, while the luminous intensity is candela. Granted, these are used more in physics, however, they are used in chemistry on occasion. Now, just because scientists use primarily the SI units does not mean that the English units are completely discounted. You can actually make direct comparisons. For instance, one inch is the same thing as 2.540 centimeters. So as long as you can convert between the two and compare them, you're okay. So this is a list of the comparison of the units. Temperature is right here and we'll be discussing that in a little bit. Now these you do need to memorize. These are prefixes for the SI units and metric units. Notice it's always base of 10 that it increases. So 10, 100, add another zero, it's a thousand. Add three more zeros, and it's a million. Add three more zeros, and it's a billion. It's always by zeros, unlike these, where these numbers are kind of odd, one foot, 0 0.03048 meters. Or you may know that there's um, one sixteenth of an inch rather than 0.1 in centimeters. So it's just very, it's a much easier way of dealing with numbers. You do need to memorize these. And how you use this chart is this goes in front in front of the base unit. So for instance, if I use C for centimeters, so I go centimeters, one centimeter is equal to, and this is how many base units we have, 0 0.01 meters. So this here is referring to the base units. So if I look up here, mega, so if I say I have one megavolt, that means that's a million. I have one million volts. Or maybe you've heard of gigabytes. So one gigabyte is equal to, this is a billion, one billion bytes. All right, so let's take a look at temperature more closely. There's three different scales for temperature. 
Fahrenheit is the English scale, Celsius is metric, and Kelvin is SI. I want to examine the freezing point of water. The Celsius scale starts at the freezing point of water. That's why it's zero. Whereas the Kelvin scale starts at where all matter stop, stops moving, which is absolute zero. So it starts zero all the way down here. It takes 273 degrees Kelvin for water to freeze. But notice if you look at absolute zero, Celsius is negative 273. The difference between these two are the same, with the exception that instead of zero here, we have 273.15. So Kelvin's is equal to Celsius plus 273.15. The difference in degrees are the same for every one, Kel one degree Kelvin that increases, one degree Kelvin also increases. The Fahrenheit scale isn't as close. Freezing point of water, water stops moving at 30, it becomes a, from liquid to solid at 32 degrees Celsius, which is why we have 32 here. But if you look here, if we compare once again to absolute zero, negative 460 in comparison to negative 273, this is a bigger difference, the 460. So for every one degree that Celsius increases, the Fahrenheit is going to equal is going to increase by nine fifths. So it's not a, as easy of a direct comparison. So we've come up with, we being scientists, have come up with this temperature scale to show how you can convert from one to the other. Notice you can't go directly from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. You have to go Fahrenheit to Celsius and then plug it into the next equation. So let's do some practice problems with those. The normal body temperature is considered to be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. What is this in Celsius? So back here, degrees Fahrenheit is 9 fifths degrees Celsius plus 32. Degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifths degrees Celsius plus 32. We're going to plug 98.6 into the Fahrenheit sign. So 98.6 is equal to 9 fifths degrees Celsius plus 32. First thing we're going to do is subtract 32. That comes out to be 66.6 .6 is equal to 9 fifths degrees Celsius. Now we got to get rid of this 9 fifths. So we're going to multiply each side by 5. That comes out to be 333 is equal to 9 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to divide each side by 9. And that comes out to be 37.0 degrees Celsius. Let's try another one. But this time we're going to use two steps. You turn your stove on to degrees Fahrenheit. What is this? Is, what is this in Kelvin? Because you cannot go from Fahrenheit to Kelvin in one step, we have to solve for Celsius first and then Kelvin. So degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifths degrees Celsius plus 32. Once again, I'm going to put 425 in for degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to subtract 32 from both sides. 393 is equal to 9 fifths degrees Fahrenheit, or degrees Celsius, pardon. Multiply each side by 5, so the 5's cancel. That's 1,965 is equal to 9 fifths, or 9 degrees Celsius. Divide both sides by 9. That comes out to be 218 degrees Celsius. From here, I want to get into kelvins. So I know that kelvins is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So kelvins is equal to 218 plus 273.15. This comes down to be 491.5 kelvins. 
let's move on to scientific notation. Scientific notation is a special way of writing numbers. You are able to express very large and very small numbers easier and more compact. It's written like this. You have a coefficient times a base of 10 to the exponent. So what this is saying is you're going to move, since it's base of 10, we're going to move the decimal. And that exponent tells you how many times to move the decimal. So for here, 23, that means here's the decimal. We're going to move that decimal 23 times. So how do you figure out the power of 10? Think about how many places do I want to move that decimal point. If the number is larger than 10, so here, this number is much bigger than 10. The decimal has to move to the left and the power would be positive. So a big number turns a, po a positive power exponent. If the number is smaller than one, so it's going to be point something, 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 something. So a small number, you have to move it to the right, and then the power of 10 will be a negative number. So here's an example, 700. The decimal point isn't written here, but it goes right here. We move it two places to the left because it's over 10. So that becomes 7 times 10 to the second. 10 to the second is the same thing as 100. So it's like you're saying 7 times 100. Those two values, 700 and 7 times 10 to the second, have the same value. They're just written in different ways. Let's do some practice problems here. The invisible decimals right here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it becomes 6.15 times 10 to the fourth. Here's our decimal that's written. It's a small number, so I'm going to move it to the right this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5.68 times 10, since we moved it to the right, it would be negative 5. 1, 2. 3.21 times 10 to the second because we moved it two spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 6.496 6 times 10 to the seventh. We only have to move it two times this time. 7.085 times 10 because we moved it to the right because it was a small number, is negative 2. Now we're going to take it out of scientific notation. Times 10 means we're going to move the decimal place three times. One, two, three. Because I moved it past where the numbers stop, I'm going to add another zero there. Do not write the decimal though. You do not rewrite that decimal unless, you, unless it's between numbers. If you had to add zeros, don't write decimals. We're moving it eight places because it's positive. We're going to make the number bigger. One, two, three, four, five. I need three more spots, so I'm going to be adding three zeros. Six, seven, eight. I added three zeros to it. Notice I did not put a decimal at the end of that. Times ten to the negative four, meaning it's going to be a smaller number, so I'm going to move it to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. When you move it to the left, you do need to add the decimal. So when you move it to the left, you add the decimal. When you move it to the right, you do not. Times 10 to the negative 2. 1, 2. I only need to add one zero this time. 0 0.09004. And that gives you some practice with scientific notation as well.